judgment. This is a time for judgment. Welcome to today's show, Cardi B, ladies and gentlemen. Some of you are familiar with Cardi B. This is apparently a musician. We're supposed to believe in an artist. But for those of us with actual eyes, what we see and what we hear is the sound of a shrieking demon and the vision of a disturbing, disgusting, demonic creature that has taken over what appears to be flesh. But anyway, Cardi B is a new music video, and I have to cover it because this is a do with our friend the Black Goo. And it's so right in our faces that, well, you got to see it to believe it. Now, Cardi B is another one of these Illuminati puppets they want you to believe is from rags to riches. I don't understand how anyone actually thinks that these people are talented. It doesn't matter what they are, what skin color they are, from Machine Gun Kelly to Cardi B to Kanye West. The things that they speak about in their songs. I mean, can I read you some of the inspiring lyrics before I show you the connection to 5G and Black Goo? I'll just replace some of the curse words with, you know, whatever. So she says... These are the lyrics in the song, and this is this is how they dumb down societies by beating this type of crap into people's heads, and of course they use subliminal mind control methods, and they put in words as well, like Glock and 9mm and all this other stuff. This is a massive mind control operation. Anyway, this is some of the lyrics. Now this is that hot shark. Jimmy Snuka off the top rope. Superfly shark. Might get in the tub with all my ice on some pock shark. Either way you slice it, bottom line, on the top, biatch. I mean, oh my goodness. Yes, you should make millions of dollars. Like People out there actually think of that. They write their own music, and then they put it on YouTube. And they're like, maybe I, I can become fit. Because they see, I mean, everybody else doing it. And it's like, wow, Cardi B's so talented. I wish I could be. I mean, what? The job of these social engineers is to dumb down society. That's why we are where we are. Look around you. We have walking, talking zombies regurgitating stuff like this with nothing going on in their head. So Cardi B we've seen in the past dress up as the devil, pay homage to the Baphomet, and I can't show you some of the photos from the video because it's just disgusting. Uh, but Cardi B starts off this video, and she's, where is she? Oh, she's on top of a 5G tower, ladies and gentlemen. She's on top of a 5G tower. Well, where have we seen this before? You might remember I covered the show Lucifer where Lucifer actually uses the 5G tower in the show as his throne, as, death, as Satan's throne, Lucifer's throne. The 5G tower must be a coincidence, of course. Now we know that in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 2, and you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work, in the sons of disobedience. The prince of the power of the air. What is music? How do you hear music? People don't realize there are frequencies in the air, right? Well, it's everything to do with what's going on right now with the outbreak with the 5G and with things that people are putting inside of their body. So we have her on top of a 5G tower. There's a reason that that's perceived as the throne. Now, 5G might not be the end game. Many of us know that 6G is right around the corner. That number six is a number we're all very familiar with a certain number that starts with six. But she's on top of that, right? Then she talks about, as you can hear here, she mentions, gonna connect. Right? So she's talking about connecting as these two, out of nowhere, she's just got two robots right next to her. Right? As she's catching fire. I mean, you could look at it many different ways. Some people say, well, you're stretching there. Well, I, how would I be stretching when, how would this music sit? This music video is called Hot Shark. And it really is a hot piece of shark. But how would this even correlate with what's occurring here? What does it have to do with two robots? What does it have to do with 5G Tower? So, as this continues on, we then see this feral flu, this graphene oxide you know we see this black goo let's just call it that the black goo we see it going up and down and up and down right you've seen this before is this art because i'm pretty sure it's not art i'm pretty sure we see it all the time if it was art it would be something completely out of right field creative no 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 we see it with all these musicians now lady gaga how many things have i covered with black goo a million and i'm sure you've seen many other videos covering the black goo so we see 
Kanye West appeared with a veil over him again. So he just is his new thing where he wears a paper bag pretty much over his face, which we're all fine with. But he's really referencing wearing a veil because the veil is over everybody. Right? What does the Bible say about a veil? I've said it many, many times on this channel. It is a very important Bible quote. Isaiah chapter 44, verse 18. They have not known nor understood, for he has shut their eyes that they cannot see and their hearts that they cannot understand. That's what we're witnessing right now. Where Satan has shut people's eyes, they are completely oblivious to what's going on. And when people stumble upon stuff like this, people like us talking about it, it's almost like their soul is pulling at them to, to believe it or to listen, and they automatically have this defense put into them, ingrained into them through the mind control, where they go, that's conspiracy stuff. Oh, yeah, you know, Illuminati and all this stuff. And they automatically just dismiss it. That's how they've been programmed. They, Satan has put a blind over them, a veil over them. He has shut their eyes. So as they continue on here, we see even... You know, you could see lasers, right? And people would look at that in the music video. They'd be like, oh, laser beams. You know, is, or is it somebody's like, you know, someone wants to shoot this, you know, clueless rapper who is completely untalented and nobody can understand what he's saying. So he wants to shoot him. He's got all these, uh, you know, it's that cool. He's got all the, you know, the, the bullseye on him there. No, no. This is referencing the frequencies in the air. This is the things that you can't see. See, people who hear music, they don't think anything about vibrations and frequencies and these things they could use to control your mind, which I'll show you in a minute for those of you that don't know. They don't think about that stuff at all. All they think about is, is it cool? Let me get it back on my phone. They're completely out. They're not, I don't want to say out of touch with reality. They're not here. And we have to try to get them awake so that they can come back to reality. So as this guy, of course, is rapping, Cardi B is rapping, we also see a lightning bolt, bolt not bolt, Lightning bolt. This again referencing scripture, Luke chapter 10, verse 18. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven, which is why you always see lightning, most commonly in music. ACDC, lightning bolt. Kiss, lightning bolt. Right? Marilyn Manson constantly with the lightning bolt. Even referencing himself as the Antichrist. Always a lightning bolt, but people don't use any sense. They're just like, wow, they lightning's cool, you know. They must be storm watchers. They travel around, and they, they always have the weather channel on, and all their whenever they go to a hotel, they make sure they have the weather channel, not because they care about what weather is coming. They just want to see some lightning. I mean, really? These videos are just filled with signs and symbols to tell you what's going on because this is how sigil magic, and this is how black magic really works. They reveal all this stuff to you. They're doing it right in front of everyone's faces. just nobody is on the same frequency level because everybody is just turned off right now. We need to turn people back on into this reality, into this realm that is completely corrupted, that is completely under control, and show them this stuff so that they can realize that everything is a deception that's going on right now and everything is a lie. And that the Bible is the only truth in this world. And God tells us that constantly in Scripture. That Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. The truth. Because he's the only truth. So, let me show you this, because some of you might remember Astro World, right? So, let's just recap here. We have Cardi B, sitting on top of the 5G tower, right? We have her talking about connecting, and then we have this black goo just pumping up, right? People see it, they're like, oh, it's just going with the beat, man. It's just pumping with the beat. I've talked about Astro World before. You remember that thing with Travis Scott and the Kardashians, of course, because the high Armenian witches are connected to all this stuff too, very much so. And the, you know, the, out the thing that occurred at the concert where people were trampled, a lot of people died, supposedly. And... A lot of us felt like, well, you know, there are ways that they can use frequencies to control people's behaviors. And if people have some type of magnetic thing inside of them and their bodies, which bodies naturally produce energy, and they they have this magnetic energy that can be controlled, like a controllable, programmable matter, and they use the frequencies of 5G or even just sound and music to amplify this, then these things can turn into like zombie-like creatures and become rabid. And this is, you know, just a little talk about frequencies. Programming. Music is frequency. What fre frequency are you being fed? If I play with those frequencies, right, I can target certain parts of the mind, target the frequency to go to certain parts of the mind, and I can literally, if I want you to ask project, or if I want you to go to sleep, or if I want you to go into a meditative state, I can make my music do that. The brain 
processes information electrically. It communicates with the cellular structure electrically, and it operates within a certain band of frequency. If you can broadcast frequencies carrying information, this, this technology has long been known, carrying information and perceptions within the frequency that, that the brain decodes information, the brain will decode those frequencies and will have those perceptions. You can externally influence people's perceptions externally by broadcasting these frequencies that, that we interact with because we are antenna. Sad reality is that where we now play our music is in A440. Where did that come from? It used to be 417. A440 came in with the Roman Catholic Church. They suppressed the frequencies. They lost somehow the 152 of the best Gregorian chants, including the hymn to St. John the Baptist, which we've now recovered. And that particular hymn was what triggered Dr. Coleo's investigation, looking for those frequencies, the vibration by which the music was played. It was known as the most uplifting hymn of the, all the ages, the most spiritually uplifting hymn, hymn to St. John the Baptist. Played six tones. These are those six tones. These are those six frequencies. And so the A440 is what now is the standard tuning. If you go A439, you're closer to one of the Creator's tones. If you go A441, you're closer to one of the Creator's original tones. That's how precisely it has been manipulated. To do what? to shut down the 95% of your brain, particularly the right brain that operates the heart mind to the divine human being. Some decades ago, there was a guy who worked out the frequencies of different emotional states. This is long ago. I mean, it's very, very sophisticated now. So every thought, every emotional response is a frequency. It, it generates a frequency, and it is of, of itself a frequency. Hate is a frequency, and it's different to love. You know, when you are in a, in a room, and there's lots of aggression and conflict and hatred, you feel it. What do people say? Well, oh God, you can cut the atmosphere with a knife in there. That is because the frequencies of hate and conflict have been so generated, they have changed the electromagnetic field of the room. When you go driving your car, and your channel on the radio is tuned to a station, and you're grooving to the music, you love that music, as you get farther and farther away from the broadcasting tower, that music gets static. You start to lose the signal from the clear channel, broadcast, and it gets staticky. When it gets staticky, you get a little annoyed. But you want to listen to it. You really have a heart for that music. So you continue to listen to it for another 10, 15 miles. And suddenly it becomes so annoying that you just get disgusted. You go, ah, and you shut it off. And if you continue to listen to it, you get sick. That's what we're talking about here. Except you don't even know that you've been listening to the static your whole life. You don't even know what the true resonant frequency is because it has been kept. Now, of course, to really be effective, we need to use the proper words and phrases, scientifically selected. But that gives you the basic idea. We embed messages just below the threshold of perception, so they can go directly into the subconscious. They can play across a community these frequencies, but they won't know it. And it starts to have an effect, and it starts to build, build rage, it starts to build anger. And people might not realize why they're feeling it, but they start to feel it. And then what they do is they, they trigger that with an event. Maybe, a, you know, some guy is attacked by the police or something, or somebody's arrested for something they didn't commit. And now there's a trigger. The blue touch paper's been lit of this manufactured frequency.
policy-driven rage, and you have mass riots and what have you, and people do things that they wouldn't normally do. So in other words, the master composer, master conductor of the Universal Orchestra is singing love songs in 528, uplifting everything simultaneously. And we're the only species out of tune and accepting stout for the clear job. Do you know that the American military, they've admitted this, they have technology that fires frequencies at the enemy that basically breaks the enemy's spirit so they, they, they give up and um, put their weapons down. This is the technology we're dealing with. So if you play Connect the Dots and you see this stuff, they even tell you in the music videos what's happening in the world right now. If you've watched the videos I've done on the World Economic Forum and things like that, they've talked about connecting human beings to technology. Paul Schwab, and people are like, oh, what does that have to do? Oh, I don't know, your president's there, Joe Biden, your prime minister, Justin Trudeau, whatever country in your world leader, representative, are at these meetings with these people. And they sit there and they tell you that there's going to be a great reset. And people are like, oh, okay. What do you think, Joe? They're just showing up there to make face. They're flying around the world all the way to Davos to just smile, take pictures. They're plotting against you, against humanity. And the goal is to connect people to technology, not for the betterment of technology. It's to do with the mark of the beast. It has to do with controlling you. That's all they care about is controlling you. That's what's happening right now is about control. People are like, they don't care. Why? Because Bill Gates comes on TV and he's like, he's like, if people think I want to chip you and follow you around, like I care what you're doing. Oh, they care all right. They care all right. Why do they care? Not because they want to watch you and touch themselves watching you. They care because, one, they don't want to lose the control that they have. They want to be able to control everybody's movements, everybody, not just through mind control, literally control you, like marching soldiers. They care because if they are inside your mind and they know what you're thinking all the time, then they can be protected and make sure that nobody comes after them when they realize what they've done and what they're doing. But at this rate, obviously nobody's going to figure it out because nobody wants to pay attention to it. And they all think it's a crazy conspiracy, so they continue to just go, man, something feels really wrong with what's going on in life. Something doesn't feel right. But I'll continue texting away and doing things even though I feel depressed, miserable, and I can't figure out why. You know, I have a boyfriend or a husband, and I just feel miserable, and nothing's satisfying me. It's because you're living in oblivia. It's because they're controlling you, not just with frequencies, they're controlling you with mind control operations that are doing this to you, and your soul is fighting against it. It's trying to come out of her, come out of this, this beast, this harlot that it's in. So this video shows you exactly what's occurring, and it's a stupid video, right? It's a Cardi B video. Nobody really cares, but this is them showing you stuff in plain sight. That's what all these videos do. So I constantly always talk about this stuff. I remember when I first started, people were like, oh, it's just for clickbait. You know, these videos don't show up for clickbait, okay? Like, you don't get, oh, I want to go watch a review of a Cardi B video. I show you this because this is them programming the, these people. They're showing them what's happening right in their faces. It's the equivalent of going somewhere, going to the store, and you give a guy a $100 bill at the dollar store, and you buy, like, one piece of candy that's a dollar, and you hand, put your hand out for change, and he holds the middle finger up to your face and smiles. That's what they do. They just hold their middle finger up at all of us by doing this and showing it. And this is how magic works. There is a spell that is being cast upon everyone, everywhere. And music is one of the main ways they do it. This goes back, and don't tell me, you know, oh, well, you know, back when I used to listen to music, this has been going on, and, you know, since they've controlled the music, right? What I read before, Satan about being the prince of the air, music coming through the air. This goes back to even the Beatles and the Tavistock Institute, and back masking with Stairway to Heaven and all that stuff. This is part of how they operate. Massive witchcraft, massive sorcery that the Bible warns against being put on the masses. So this shows you everything right here in plain sight. Not hard to see if you actually pay attention to it. Pretty amazing that they have the balls to do this. And trust me, Cardi B has balls. <laughs> you know what I mean? But literally, pretty amazing that uh, people still don't see it. And they just, just you know... This thing is gets labeled as art, and then they're just like, I want to be like Cardi B. And you're like, do you even hear what these people rap about or sing about? What they say? The pointless nothingness that comes out of their mouths? No, they don't.
They're just like, you're just jealous and a hater because they're so talented. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because we all, <laughs> those of us who are not under my control, we strive to be like these losers. And these people are miserable, too. These celebrities, they're miserable. All they want is fame and fortune. And they still have handlers and this stuff. They're miserable people because they know that they're only famous deep down inside because they're being pushed by their handlers. In the mainstream, they would be nothing. They'd be doing nothing. They'd be talentless nothings, which is fine, which is an okay thing to just be a regular person. But, I mean, they'd be below that because they're just – they're on autopilot too. But they're telling you what's going on. And they're the, what, the ones who are making these videos. They're just standing there. But they know what's up. They're in on it. They're the influencers. They just don't really have any say. They're the lowest level puppets that there really are. But they have more power than most of these other people because they persuade the people. So that's why they're important to the elites. I thank everyone for being here. I hope you're enjoying the new channel. Appreciate you all greatly. God bless you and your families. So let me now introduce, uh, having introduced the city and welcomed you in this, this, this hall, um, say a few things about Howard Zinn. Um, of course, he may usually say probably needs no introduction. I dare say all of you know of his ongoing and ceaseless activity as an advocate for peace and justice in our own time. But not all of you may know his biography. And I had a chance to become much more closely acquainted with it this summer when I uh, read his work, and, and by the way, uh, the collected works of Howard Zinn are now available in paperback edition from the South End Press, a Boston publishing company. Howard was born and raised in Brooklyn, worked in the Navy Yard there at the beginning of World War II, and until he enlisted in the uh, Army Air Corps, he served in, in Europe, flying B-17 missions as a bombardier. After the war, he did graduate work New York on the GI Bill and based and, and did work union jobs there while he was doing that and published his first book uh, based on his thesis, A Study of Theodore LaGuardia's Years in Congress. His first teaching job was at Spelman College where he became deeply, passionately, and very effectively involved in the civil rights movement. He wrote two books based on that experience, The Southern Mystique and SNCC, the New Abolitionists. After Spellman, he, uh, he came here to teach at BU, where he continued his work as a peace activist and a critic of the U.S. war in Vietnam. Two enormously important books emerged during that period, very important to the peace movement and to the draft resistance movements. Vietnam, The Logic of Withdrawal, and Civil Disobedience and Democracy. Again, all these books are available from South Bend. Uh, he was also active with a number of other people in this room at about the same time in organizing the Radical Caucus, Radical Historians Caucus in the OAH, uh, pushing for uh, the organization to take a position on the war in Vietnam and for the organization of American historians to democratize itself, which it has done quite a bit. Uh, so let me just... Um, close by mentioning the book that you probably are all most familiar with, A People's History of the United States, which as of last winter had sold a million copies, uh, surely one of the most extraordinary uh, books written by a historian in our time. And I was just listening to a radio show on WGBH, and oh yes, I will remember <laughs> this uh, announcement on WGBH, in which people were calling in to talk to Howard about the book but also talking in very personal terms about what a moving experience uh, it was to read that book. And I want to say that uh, this event it will be webcast for the WGBH Forum Network at wgbh.org slash forum. So welcome to Boston, welcome to the Old South, and let's welcome Howard Zinn.
That's my limit. Louder. Can you all hear me now? Oh, okay. Uh, <clears throat> well, Jim Green, thank him not only for introducing me and telling some truths, <laughs> some exaggerations, but that's what historians do all the time. And uh, Jim had a lot to do with organizing this whole, uh, this, not only this event, but the, you know, this whole huge thing that's happening with the Organization of American Historians. By the way, how many people here are here through the Organization of American Historians? Oh, there are quite a few. And the rest of you are, are just normal people. <laughs> Jim gave, you, Jim gave you a kind of clue to the kinds of things I'm interested in. I, that I'm, I'm interested in history, not, not just to be interested in history. I'm not interested in just going into the past. And interesting as it is, well, fascinating as it is, reading people's letters and going into the archives and coming up with stuff that nobody else knows, whether it's important or not, you see. Uh, but uh, I'm not... Uh, I never was interested in just that. I didn't want really just to be a professional historian and go to meetings of annual meetings of the AHA and the OA, you know, and as exciting as they are. Uh, but never, no, that, that wasn't my intent. My intent was to study history, go into the past, and see what I could get from that that would enable me to deal with whatever was going on in the world today. And I guess that, that approach to history comes out of uh, my own experience.